And we are not live. And we are not live. The <laughs> pre-recorded episode of The Last Word. Because we love you too much to go away. We love you too much to go away. We got to get you something with my incredible campfire co-host, Ebontis, Ty Guy, Travis. How are we doing on this pre-recorded in the future? What's the little music comes out? The little dream sequence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever thought about, um like, you know, you know, in like, uh, some like smooth jazz songs where like in the middle all of a sudden like a, a deep voice comes in and just starts like talking directly at the listener. Have you ever thought about doing that? Because like... someone said that. You know who's better at Sov. Really? Sov is like, yo, bro, he should be like on one of those slow jam radio stations. He's just like the quiet stuff. He's just so Sov is smoother than me. People give me credit. I'm telling you, that man, I'm telling you, man. He, he, he he's a smooth talker. But yeah, I, people have told me that. People like, yo, you have a really good voice for that kind of stuff. And I like it. I like you know having yeah, fun. I'll be, I'll be taking the fine and duke with me on the on the trip in case I need nice. some uh, you know, Yeah, you're a good soothing voice and I would be a good voice for like emergency alarms. Get up. Go. You need to go now. Go. It's danger. Run. That's that would be my voice. I just have a good And apparently I'm somewhere between get up, get yeah. out, and smooth talking voice jazz. Yeah. You're you're uh we need more baggers up front. That's the voice of you know, I'm just oh, messing wow. with you, buddy. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> that was not one of the predefined categories we discussed. Oh boy, e. uh, Texas E. Yeah. So many E's that he, we, that Travis has uh, we add, So, okay. Obviously, this show's <laughs> already fallen off the rails for those of you guys who are watching or listening. So, we do hope you enjoy this one. It's just kind of a bonus. But as a couple of us are going to be out of town, I'm not going to be here. This We wanted to schedule in advance, but actually, I can't remember which one of you said was the good idea. Just a little getting to know your hosts, because we talk about Destiny every single week. Thank you, Travis. Uh, we do talk about Destiny every week. Every so often, you guys might want to hear about something else. So I know it is Destiny, but none of us are playing it this week since we're all out of town. So we just kind of wanted to let you guys get to know us just a little bit. So we're just going to kind of bounce around random questions. I'm going to keep try and keep Travis in check here. And other than that, uh, I'm going to throw it to Cog first. You may ask whoever, or maybe it's a question for both. However you want to do this, go ahead. Cog, you are first. Yes, this question is for Trav. Um, I want to know, because I look at Trav and I'm like, He's like the, the the star of the show. Like he's the he's the the person at the at the, at the party that makes he's it. The, live. He's the MC. He's the entertainer. Like, yeah. yeah, like he's a guy. Like yeah, like he's that guy. So it's like my question. Like socially, do you consider yourself more an introvert or an extrovert? I've always wanted to ask you that. I'm 100 percent an introvert. It's like <laughs> not even close. I do not like people. I do not like loud noises. I don't like fun activities. I don't like parties. I don't like music. Like, I don't like pets. I, don't, there, I mean, I just like literally if it were up to me, I would just be at home and I would be productive. No, actually, that's not true. I wouldn't be at home. If I if I had it my way, I would be in an office. I only like interacting with people. You're one of those, huh? You're the only one who hates everybody working at home. Oh, I hate it because the thing really? about working from home is it reduces productivity. I'm I'm he, I'm on. That's Earth. not true. <laughs> it does. It does. Mm -hmm. it, no, I am on earth to create things. That's literally all. I don't care about my happiness or anything else. I just want. Okay. To you are like one in tiny number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. But that's okay. <laughs> you need people like me. And so, you know, the, like for me, like I want to be in an office. And here's the reason you're less productive at home, because everything takes time when you're remote. Mm -hmm. Everything takes time. You what used to just be like a tap on the shoulder and like, hey, let's fix this problem together. Now you gotta send them a Slack. It depends message. on the job. Like two hours later, and then they go right, right. You know what I mean? So right, right. I mean, I it just I it. I'm not saying that that it hasn't empowered workers a lot. I'm just saying it yeah. does. If you don't care about people's personal health, which I certainly don't, I just want to produce. Uh, it, it is less efficient and mm -hmm. I'm very robotic. So yeah, I'm an introvert, I guess is oh, what I'd say. But I put, I put on, here's the thing. When I was, when I was super young, I could mm -hmm. not speak to people. I had a speech impediment. Mm -hmm. I was, I, I was super like just shy around people scared. And I forced myself to do comedy for years. I and I, the actually. first, the first two years I did comedy, I got booed off stage every single time without oh exception. My nickname, my nickname was boo bucket 
and they like literally it was just a nightmare and i kept coming back because i really wanted to break through and figure out how to talk to people and i eventually got competent and then i got good and now it's just like a skin i can slip into like you can just turn it on and i can just be like all right it's show time or mm-hmm. if i'm interacting with friends and i'm like it's it. friend time like it's it's time mm-hmm. to do it but dude as soon as you guys are gone i'm going to like flip into just like a shut down moment and not talk to anyone and it's just going to be ones and zeros beep boop so yeah i'm 100 percent introvert Ooh, interesting yeah how about you guys i am somewhere in in between i would probably say um i lean introvert plenty of time because it's like i enjoy being a homebody i'm done with the bar scene i don't need i'm married so i've been married for 10 years um, and I'm married to an introvert, so I know one end of the spectrum. My wife is hardcore introvert, and another one of my friends is the same way. And then his wife is like the polar opposite of me, or polar opposite of him. Like he's a hard introvert, she's hard extrovert. So I I know I fall in between because I've seen both ends of the spectrum very close to me. Um, like there are times because I worked as a fitness kickboxing instructor, and sure, huh? Very social, very interactive. Yeah, it's like it's interacting with people, but it's always been when I get to know somebody, I'm good. Mm -hmm. But it's breaking that initial interaction, breaking the ice, got to get over getting to know somebody. That's always been a horrible thing for me. So Mm. when I get to know somebody and it's like and then we're friends and we're chatting, I'm just I'll give you a hard time. Like, you know, like Travis and I hang out. It's like, you know, it's like a hangout. Like you can shoot the shit and have a good time. But then if you get me in like a new social setting, like when I would teach the class at first, at first I'm like, okay, I'm going to teach. I'm going to make sure I'm good. And then I can like, I slowly loosen up, but I got to spend a lot of time around people. Got to see regulars. If I have regulars in the gym, I would probably socialize more with them than I would like the newer people, which is not how I was supposed to do it. But I was like, that would just be my tendency is when I like, if I got to know you and we were like, you know, cool, frequently spoke and stuff like that, I would be good. But generally I also... I worked in an office for about eight years as well. And unfortunately with my job in the office, everything I had to do was with people that were in other States. That would just be me in my little office. But then sometimes I also was like, I hate being in here by myself. Sometimes I'd go walk to somebody else and just like chat with them. Cause one of my buddies worked there and stuff. So there are times like I'm introvert, but there are times like, you know, it, the interactions still good. So I'm somewhere in probably just like the dead center. So funny. Listen to you. Both of y'all talk about it. I'm kind of in the middle of both of y'all too, because naturally i was probably an introvert but what happened is my mom I'm, most people know this already like the religious back she's jw with Joe witness and i used as a child i was kind of indoctrinated early into that and part of that is you have to do public speaking and that was my biggest fear getting up on stage and doing a a discourse on a bible scripture or something you know what i'm saying in front of like you know maybe a hundred and some odd people and it was just nerve wracking. And that was part of it. And then that graduated to like, oh, you're going to be doing this at Yankee Stadium now in front of 30, 000, at like very young, nine, 10 years old. And I remember the nerves and the jitters. And, and I finally would just like focus on one person. And with me, it was when I would see that person smile, it relaxed me. And I'm like, OK, I can I can I'm OK now. And then as I got older, it's just like. I don't know. I, I feel like I have that aspect of me where I'm extremely social, extremely personal. I like to make people feel good. I like to make sure everybody's okay. But then I do have a tolerance level. And once I'm done, <laughs> I don't want to see anybody. I want to be completely left alone. And I, that's why this is going to tie into Destiny. That's why I love Destiny. Destiny's my comfort food game where for whatever reason, if I, I could play that game by myself, whether it be the combination of the gunplay and the soothing music and the world is okay. And I ain't got to talk to nobody. And sometimes I'll tell people that my clan base will know when it's cog time, I'll be like, hey, bro, rough day. No disrespect. Unless y'all really need a six for a raid or something, I won't be a jerk. You know what I mean? I, if, I, if I'm the only guy on, I'll help out. But a lot of times I'm like, I'm in my happy place right now. And then I've got a couple of hours just to leave no one to bother me. I'm fine. Yeah, I, I think I read somewhere that the difference between an extrovert and an introvert is whether social interaction uh like pumps up your energy level or, or drains you. it. Yeah. And it exhausts me to no end. Like every time we're done with the show, I get off and it's a decompression. Yeah. My fiance is like, how was the show? And I'm like, Oh, 
Oh, I never want to do it again, you know, and it takes me like the entire <laughs> hundred week episodes to, like, later my... keeps coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Entire, entire, it takes me the entire week to like build back up my tolerance for mm. interaction. So. Yeah. Ooh, I mean, that's especially performing, dude. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah. whether it's like Cogs were on the show, you did fire team chat. We've all kind of sat in the producer role as well. So then you're trying to be on and also focused and yet multitask quietly which yes. is like kind of one of those yeah, things, wow. whether it's like trying to pay attention to how the guest is doing. Are they having a good interaction? Are you carrying the show? Do you have to, there's a lot going on when you're doing that. And then finally, and that's the point for me. It's like, I enjoy hanging out with you guys and talking with the guest, but yeah, it's like, whether it's my friend or, you know, it's like wife on the, that's the point where it's like, you know, one of them could go give a presentation at work and they could crush it because they know their job. But when they're done, they just want to like, shut down for the day. Yeah. So it's like, I'm yeah, not yeah. that level, but I'm also, I've seen the center of party attention and that will never be me. Yeah. That's not you. So no. Not yeah. So I was like, I, I've kind of come to my peace in the middle. <laughs> no doubt. Nice. No doubt. Good set off. Uh, random question. Just cause I don't think I've asked you guys yet, but I've asked, mm -hmm. oh, I got a dog under my desk. What are you doing? <laughs> um, yeah, I opened the gate. So yeah, they're hanging out. Um, favorite sandwich and favorite cocktail, except, for Ty, it's going to be um, favorite beverage. Yes. Hmm. Favorite sandwich. Uh, I'm kind of definitely not. The turkey stuff is just too plain. When y'all be saying turkey, I'm like, yeah, whatever. I don't. I don't prefer oh. those either. That's why I don't like sub shops. Yeah, it's like just a basic ham. I'm a basic ham and cheese kind of guy. Like I don't. I'll I'll eat pretty much any type of sandwich as long as they're. Some salt and pepper and some condiments and maybe some nice little mustard. I don't mind you know, seasoning on things. Anything. Can we clarify like, this for everybody, by the way? Can we get off of like this? Like no, I actually do like seasoning. I like spice mm -hmm. and some sauce in certain places. I typically right. don't like like hamburger cart condiments. I don't need any of those. Ketchup, mustard, mayo, relish. Those I don't want. Do I want like salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic on a burger? 100%. Would I like caramelized onions on a burger? Yes, but I don't need, but I don't like the other junk. So I'm, yes, I like seasoning. I will do, but I Very like, nice. I like teriyaki. Nice. I love teriyaki. Actually. I will put mm -hmm. that on damn near most. Like I will put that on chicken for sure. But Here, mm -hmm. here's my problem with your argument. Ian. <clears throat> your argument is predicated on the fact that if it has sauce on it, it must be low quality. Because mm -hmm. it can stand on its own. No, no, no. For you, unfortunately for you, the burger and, or steak can also be good, and the sauce can also. I get, be I get of both 10. of those because so I was it just can saying be amplifying. It doesn't have to be reductive oh. just because you add a sauce to it. And I think that maybe, but I do think I many I times I you're, I do you're think right. Many times many, that is like times. masking something that is mediocre. And here's what I would say to that: I would say I don't mean to stereotype. But the part of the world you live in, oh my God, that is very common to mask bad food with with a, like a ketchup or okay, something. Okay, like I that. lived in Wisconsin, and I can tell you it's worse in the north. But it's way worse there. Oh yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, like, no, it's, it's like in Texas, there's at least you, know, you got like Tex-Mex coming in, some spice. No, when I lived yeah, in yeah. Wisconsin, I was like, I went to a Mexican restaurant, and I was like. Oh, what? What is this? It was like yeah. tomato no. juice for salsa. Oh, no, no, no. That was yeah. me. That was me in Florida, dude. When we had Mexican food in Florida and I was like, what is this? See, this I need to come out there because we got Tex-Mex and you probably have a different type, but I definitely want to come out there and try. At yeah, some point. We, well, we don't have tech. We have we have Tex-Mex, but it's not as as common as just straight up Mexican. Yeah. Food. But yeah, I, it's just I, I guess I, I'm I'm. I think Cog and I's perspective is we both live in parts of the world where it's very common for both things to be true. Like yes. it can be a super quality meat and then also the sauces. I mean, amazing. I live in so, a capital of like amazing steakhouses. Cause in like, when we go to GCX, I cannot tell you how many tweets I see this Charlie's steakhouse is good. I'm like, I have oh 10 of God. those. I have yeah. 10 of those in my city, like fine dining steakhouses that are probably I better. Know what that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, when it comes to like good food, I understand that piece of it. And I understand a sauce can make things good, but I'm just saying like these steaks are so good, you they don't need anything and theoretically you shouldn't probably put anything on them cuz they're cooked in a very specific way that you wouldn't. Literally salt, pepper, and probably like a tiny bit of butter melted on top and that's it because the meat is, you know, dry aged for 45 days or wet aged or whatever they do. It's like it's so good you don't need anything else. Now I get certain things can like build something up as well. But again, I'm, I, 
usually I'm like the barometer of like, hey, how is this thing? It's like, oh, it's pretty good. I'm like, how is this thing? Well, it's like the burger patty is like bland. You guys got something else. You guys got multiple layers that may taste good together, but that base layer doesn't have a whole lot going on. That's all I'm saying is like, you guys can enjoy it the stuff on top. Sometimes it is sometimes true, but the perception that Cog and I have is there's a certain thing called blandness. Ooh. Salt and pepper are not really spices. They they are, but they don't really That's count. That's not I mean, all I use. I'm just saying like... <laughs> well, they're the ones you mentioned when you were talking about steaks. So... I, yeah, I'll, but a good hey, steak doesn't I'll, need I'll, any. Go look up every video on the internet. A steak go. does not need more than that. And steak is one example. I'm just saying, like, I'll I'll, I'll put a capper on it by saying this. E, I went to uh, a charity event two weekends ago, mm. and at it, it was a uh, it was uh, for like immigrant communities, and they were giving away these T-shirts and pins that said "No immigrants, no spice." And uh, I got one for you. So <laughs> next time I see you, man, I'm gonna hook you up. And I will uh, never wear that, but anyway, yeah. never wear that. <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> why no, it's, <laughs> no, it's like, it's, like a, it's a, it's a, it's a pro immigrant pen, mm-hmm. just to be yeah. clear. Like, no immigrants, no spice. Like, what do you want? You want, yeah, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and to the other part of the question, <laughs> which is as far as the, the, uh, the drink, um, I forgot that that was the question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, san- sandwich, uh, Travis, sandwich. Mm-hmm. I, I sandwiches are my second favorite food right behind salads because sandwiches are really just a salad for your fists. Um, and, uh, I would say my favorite, I've got to go for like, uh, not to be cliche, but, um, I'm probably going to go for like, uh, a Reuben, you know, uh, good, good Reuben. Nice. With, uh, yeah, th- those are those are my. Sh- but honestly, I like all sandwiches. I'm an equal yeah. opportunity sandwich Same. eater. It's the yes. most efficient food. Yeah, it's a portable nice. salad. Want to eat it? It's amazing. Can't go wrong with a good sandwich, man. Not as good. far as the drink, sweet tooth. To be honest, I remember when I first had. Um, you gotta say margarita because that's the only thing I ever see you drink. Well, yes, margarita, yes. Margarita. anything sweet. Yeah, margaritas. Yeah, you know what it is because it's not. I hate to say it because it don't seem manly, but well, yo, I could I care love, less. I am the same I way. So say it. A big margarita, frozen margarita, tequila. How is that not manly? What's you don't be proud of me? Oh no, no. Me. I'm when oh, I met yeah. my when I met my my wife. She knew what she was getting into because I ordered a pomegranate margarita on our first date, uh, and I was and I was like hundred percent. And I was like. This, but I was, but that's the thing. If you order a fruity drink, it's not like yeah. you need to have like whiskey neat or something. I'm like, it tastes yeah. like I have it not grown. Terrible. Yeah, I'm it like, it's almost, it's almost like a contest to see how bad your drink how? can be, so that yeah. you can like, you can be like, oh I yeah, have hair real, on my chest. I am bad. It's rough. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah. Bro, why are we? Why are you guys doing this to Trav, yourselves? You nailed you? it because I remember <laughs> this is a classic quick story grandfather in the house and he had like i'm young i never had any alcohol anything in my life i remember he used to keep beers at the bottom of the fridge well that's so, so you know i was like yeah i mean i'm gonna try i'm gonna be a man i want to see what this beer thing is about i taste i was like oh my god it's the worst thing i've ever tasted in my life i was like why do people I like still alcohol? don't drink beer to this like, day but this it's know. the worst i i could not stand beer until i got older i went to a bar their favorite ones are the ones with more alcohol and less flavor and, and that's like, flavor. They're, they're like oh it's yeah. an ipa so it'll like burn the enamel off your teeth or something like, like even oh. worse yeah. yeah yeah the closest i came to maybe was a blue moon and i'm like it's okay why don't, why don't people just drink exclusively like bacardi 151 just like <laughs> straight up gasoline <laughs> fuel like 75.5 percent alcohol by volume <laughs> why don't they just if that's the contest why doesn't everybody just sucking down bacardi 151 that's my question has <laughs> me coming at moonshine oh, God. <laughs> but yeah like back back on focus i remember and i remember seeing drinks and and, and like the bartender i was like yo i don't know what i like and they were like well what do you do you like sweet things i was like yeah margarita yeah. Boom, yeah. frozen rocks so i was like oh this is frozen or rocks crazy. you have to pick one Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's hard. All right, I'm gonna say non-fruit. Just say margarita, frozen rocks, because that's probably an easier question. Yeah, I, I would probably say rocks. Wait, wait, yeah, salt I rocks. was gonna yeah. say rocks for him because yeah. Uh, yeah. last time Cog was in San Francisco, I watched this man suck down like five margaritas. Juice. I, I, think I he don't found drink them. Place. I don't drink margaritas through a straw because yeah, they will go away. They I, go I away. have to drink from the edge of the cup because if it's a straw, I'm like, oh, 
Well, be... I got him extra salt on the ones I ordered for oh, him, and he me. was he had no problem drinking from the side. <laughs> no, was good. Those things were gone. Honestly, he was on a time crunch. He had to be at the airport like really soon. You're like, I just want to be drunk had, on my flight. Apparently, we only had like 35 minutes, and he went through like five of these dudes. Dude, Damn. they were like they Just were gone shots. faster than the waitress could bring them it was pretty yeah, crazy yeah. i was like man this guy's like a hero nice. but he's got to feed that gears of war body though he needs that much right. the, the meat box needs some attention yeah, meat, meat box, box. <laughs> <laughs> the deep uh, is still upset about that i uh, know <laughs> hilarious uh, uh, travis what about uh beverage for you Besides your yeah. five waters that I can see. <laughs> yeah, I know. I drink these on the show. I just have a lot. You guys can see them in the background. But I have these because um, I'm not allowed to have caffeine because I have a heart condition. So these yeah. have like the maximum amount of caffeine that it's acceptable for me to have. And I'm tired a lot because I don't mm-hmm. sleep very long hours and mm-hmm. I'm not allowed to have caffeine. I also can't have alcohol. So that ruins yeah. a lot of like the cocktail yeah. questions. So uh, I don't really have like a favorite drink. But I will say if you're going purely by like flavor and not like i i would drink it if it didn't destroy my body yeah mm-hmm. i probably would i mean like you know everybody would probably choose like milkshakes or something you i know, mean like, but, that's a beverage know. go for it why but not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna choose that i used to before when it, when i could have caffeine i used to have an addiction to like energy drinks Okay. Back when I was like a, a very young person like mm-hmm. i liked rock star energy drinks a lot oh the high quality them. stuff it was, like drink, it was like drinking like a uh, candy from a bottle, you know, yes. but I mean, that's like, I, I haven't drink an energy drink or even a soda. I haven't touched soda wow. in like a decade or more. Well, probably, I'm probably, honestly probably. like, I'm like for soda. I used to love Sunkist, but like Ooh. the last few times. Yeah. I was like, I don't, I have never finished an entire cola drink in my life. Not no, Dr. Pepper. No, not co- like I don't drinks, like dark, dark colored, drinks. like dark colored soda. No Dr. Pepper, no Pepsi, no uh, Coke, none of those. I've I've always done Sprite, Sierra Mist, Orange Crush, Sun Kissed. That's my jam. He just drinks. He just drinks Capri Sun. His Capri his Sun. evolves. His tastes <laughs> never evolved past third grade. Capri <laughs> Suns, juices, Fanta. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sunny Delight. Sunny D. <laughs> yep, yep. Sunny D is not good after you have like good orange juice. Sunny D is something else. It's it's a creation, but isn't it not orange juice? And it's yeah, it's not even. Yeah, orange I don't even think it's orange juice. It's, orange it's, juice. it's something else. Uh, for me, for cocktail, margarita is, I'm like a man of two minds. Mexican Stop. restaurant, margarita is 100% right Mandatory. there. Mandatory. Absolutely. On the rocks mm-hmm. with salt, high quality, mm-hmm. Grand Marnier in there, probably Ooh. some type. Um, Got to have that mix. Not like if you can do, there's one by us that uses even just like real, like agave and just a little bit of lemon juice, stuff like that. Yeah, lemon or lime, either one. Orange on, if you can squeeze an orange into your margarita, smooths every one of them out. Seriously, get a margarita, and then if they serve oranges at the bar, squeeze like a slice of orange in there as well, and it's going to just, it like smooths the whole thing out. I do that when I can. It's always nice. Mm-hmm. On the, the other side, if it's not there and I'm just, we're at a little nicer place, lemon drop martini, like 10 times out of 10. I've seen you do that. Yeah, I've seen you do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I make them at home too, and usually one, because our martini glasses we got for our wedding are like, Big one is good for my wife. Two is too many. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so they're they're strong because it's three ounces of vodka in each one that I make. So if you have two, it's a lot. So uh, for sandwich, I have probably two. Since I don't love, since mo- if I ever do a sandwich, it was always boring and plain. So I get the mm-hmm. argument and joke that you guys have: meatball sub. Oh, okay. If I'm gonna go to a sandwich place and they have a meatball sub, you look I'm... like a meatball sub guy. Thanks. <laughs> you look you look like your dad Thanks. was on like uh your dad worked on like a, a wore a hard hat at work. No, he did no, like, no, he absolutely you know? did not, but yeah. Eat a meatball sub. Yeah. yeah I work uh... backstories you make for me. <laughs> I have the weirdest history, guys. It's very strange. I can't explain it all. Uh but the other mm. side, honestly, just like at home, since I generally don't like, you know, I don't like sliced deli meat generally. I mean, it's fine, but it's okay. Seriously, like my other side is going to be a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and I know there's oh, the third no, grader. No, no, I love that. Wow. No, 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 I love that. Peanut I'm butter jelly, that. like yeah, I love that. I actually might interesting. I might actually reevaluate. <laughs> I, I really love peanut butter and jelly. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm okay. Uh, top three. Top three jelly. Not with you guys. On top three jellies. 
Um, I've latest switched to a preserved strawberry preserve kind of guy. Okay. Oh, I'm in more fruit. I'm not worried about like jam, jelly, or preserve. Oh, like okay, I get I those. Yeah. Okay. No. Grape. Okay. Strawberry. Grape, strawberry. Grape. Purple. It's called purple coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> grape tends to only come in jelly because you're never going to find like grape preserves like that doesn't exist I've always looked I'm like oh let me get the preserves it's like no grape is just jelly or jam maybe but no I've actually been kind of if I see them since I don't see them that often if I can find like an apple cinnamon or like an apple pie or something like that they're not as often and usually not done that well but if I find them I like them okay, that's cool. I'm surprised that's you cool. guys didn't take the cocktail question as a time to advertise advanced GG I expect <laughs> This cocktail with Advanced GG. Shout out to Advanced so GG, yeah. the unofficial sponsor of this podcast. Use code Ibontis yeah. or uh, Lord Cognito. Shout out to Advanced GG. He's he allegedly mixed Crown Royale with Advanced GG. You it's know, so, like, that's one of those good. things. The I lemonade. Like, the lemonade, There's I was no, going to say, is probably no one of the easiest ones to put with, like, vodka, probably I, ever. I, I guarantee you he broke some sort of uh, partnership agreement by saying that he mixes alcohol with Advanced GG. I'm sure that's in, like, the do not, like, promote <laughs> this or, like. No, I, I think it. that's I probably DJ okay. That. <laughs> really? You think so? Yeah, DJ did. No, that. I was like, I've heard them talk about it kind of like jokingly. It's like, it's also a pretty good mixer. Like, mm -hmm. so, I mean, they have a strawberry daiquiri there's flavor. No, so, there's there's no, I bet you if you guys wrote over your green. Hey, move it on. There, anyway, move it yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next <laughs> random really question. Get stuff out of here. Neither of you guys said to do it. I'm yeah. not saying you're in trouble. I'm just saying. I, I'll see. I'll see. we got for the crew? Got? Got I've got a question. I've asked. Yeah, I was like, go. You guys both asked. It's my turn. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> All right. Nice guy. Come on. What's something you do that you do not share with the internet in life? And Cog, you can obviously keep your secret uh, serial killing life. Off yeah. The table for this. yeah. I got one. Yeah. Go for it. I'm a crier sometimes at movies. Oh, snap. I'm so glad I asked this question. <laughs> I'm a cry. I, I, I have to admit, I got to come clean. There are some movies. I told you about one, Trav. I told you. You did, and I'm supposed to watch the it. Stripe. Me and you got to talk for What's the movie? Reason. Now you got to say the movie. The boy with the striped pajamas. It's a it's a Holocaust thing. He knows. Oh, got God. to watch. There's certain. I admit, like. I'm not. I'm now not ashamed to say it, but there are movies or moments. Even I'm. I'm, I'm gonna take it even further. Music. Ooh. Sometimes a video game. I can remember exactly what I was doing. Opening ten minutes of Last of Us. Straight up. Yeah, I can remember really? exactly what yeah. I was doing, the age I was playing it, what was happening in my life, and if that theme. Even if it was a competitive fighting game, I remember who I was fighting. What I was, I, I have a very photographic memory in that sense. And when I'm in that place, whatever, if it meant a lot to me for whatever reason, sometimes that tear flows. So, yes, I am a crier with certain bits of entertainment by myself. Yes. I will awesome. actually, I will second. That wasn't anything I was going to say, but I will 100% second that. Well, but you got to share your own. You can't just pick you out. No, no, no. Like, I'll, um, I'll, I'll comment on his by saying I'm the exact opposite. I'm like, people accuse me of being a You're dead inside? Just completely <laughs> emotional. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I mean, I'm sure that's not surprising to you guys, but like literally <laughs> nothing. Like nothing? I just, other people, other people be crying and I'll be like, I don't get it. I mean, mm. I mean, I feel empathy for them. I, I right. what's what's crazy is I feel more strongly when I see other people crying. But if you're like, Travis, how you feel? I'd be like, I didn't even think about that. Like it just doesn't come to mind. I just, I'll, I'm like a, I'm like a reverse sociopath. I don't so think my own emotions are real. I think other people's are real. Before That's, he answers, know. so when you see other people crying, what happens? I feel really badly for them, mm. but it, but the, I, the idea of me feeling emotion in reaction to them just never occurs to me. Okay, like I've been at funerals. Of like people that were really close to me. And I'm just like, yeah, I feel, no I feel, I feel emotion. I feel bad, right. but it's just crying is not a natural response. That's just not your response. I don't really, I don't really emote very, very often. And when I do, it's because I'm trying to fit in. Like, I'll just be like, oh, I'm supposed okay. to be angry about this thing. On I'm supposed to be <laughs> so I'll be angry. But inside it's just okay. ones and no, zeros. That's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. I got to hear this, but I didn't know I had a fellow. Crying. Yeah. Oh what no. Like, at? trust me. Ask my wife. She's seen it too. I was like, oh, it's. No. It's something he ordered, he ordered a pomegranate margarita and he's crying with me at movies. Yeah, There's she's... something wrong with this boy. <laughs> That's what she's saying. No, um, and it's 
I mean, there can be a lot of moments to it. Um, one where I barely could like keep a straight face. There's a book that my wife and I read. Um, it's called The Art of Racing in the Rain. And it's told from the perspective of a dog. Uh, the dog is the dog's owner is a race car driver. And I've always like had an efficient, like we've talked about this like with nomad and stuff. I love cars have forever. Um, I even had a car that I took to a racetrack like 10 times before it broke. Um, I don't know about that. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second, I guess. Um, mm. But it's told from the dog's perspective. And when it gets to the end of the movie, we read it. We actually like, cause we do like car trips to her wife's, to my wife's family. And it's like eight hours. So like one of the times we did it, we read a book, book out loud to each other. It's just like, we haven't done a lot, but it was one of those that just That's happened. Sweet. Yeah, I know. It's adorable. Right. Yeah. That's but adorable. no, I was like, when we got to the end, like when we were reading the book, I was like, okay, yeah. kind of like, I cried at the end of the book, but when it was at the movie, there were just mm -hmm. multiple times towards the end of that movie as I kind of know what's coming. Just, mm -hmm. I was destroyed. I was like openly mm -hmm. just like bawling in the theater with mm -hmm. my wife. And I was just like, yeah. that one got me. Cause Raya, who you guys probably haven't seen. She is my first dog ever. I did okay. not have a dog growing up. She is my first dog ever. Okay. So anytime anything like that hits yeah. and my wife won't even like the movie, like does the dog or the website does the dog die. I have mm. to go to that. Cause my wife won't even watch them. Cause her empathy oh. for animals is Way worse than mine because she doesn't want to see anything, any animal, like anything bad happen, especially for like a dog. Mm -hmm. But it was that movie because like he's so like close with the dog and it's told from the dog's perspective. And it's like that one got me. But I mean, it it's not just that, but it was also like I got emotional and it's like and I'll tear up and cry. It was like it was literally in um, Endgame. Oh, on my left. Which one? Uh, any there are multiple in that um, one. Okay, really? well, oh, you talk about Ed Game. What about what about when Scarlet it Witch? Oh, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Scarlet crazy. Witch got me. And then it's like, and then sometimes it's like I swear I just get like overloaded with emotion or whatever. Mm -hmm. And because that's when you said like that the on your left and then all. But I was yeah, like I jumped out of my seat for the hammer. But like on your left when it's like those things just like happen and I can't always control them so no it's like yeah. yeah sometimes i swear like emotion just like comes out of my eyes i was like it's just weird so yeah no i get it i get it. i'm an underdog guy and i think trav labeled me and it was pretty accurate one episode and he was just like are you like a you call me like a underdog or like a contrary like whatever people Hipster. yeah like whatever is the popular thing sometimes i yeah. don't gravitate towards that i gravitate towards the this obscure thing and when the obscure yeah, you're a hipster thing, you like sega Xbox, you, yeah, just all the stuff you like. It's like you're just never in the mainstream. And, and when the obscure thing wins, it means more to me because it's like it's not supposed to happen. So I get emotional. I'm like, it's my little thing that triumphed. <laughs> that, that's my mentality. It's stupid, but that's how I, that's how I think. It's like Aren't my you a Mets thing. fan too. Yes, it, yeah, it, it, I literally live five minutes away. I grew up in South Bronx, five minutes away from Yankee Stadium. And I'm the only Mets fan. And I'm walking through proud, like, what? Like, I'd go to Yankee. It was unheard of with a Met hat. Like, people get beat up. For <laughs> like, I was just, I'm a rebel, man. And I like to defend the, the little guy, the person that no one's riding for. I've you say rebel, one. I say hipster. But hipster. either way, I admire Give me the hipster. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> He's going to wear the hipster badge. I'm going to rock it. I'm going to rock it. No doubt. Uh, Cog, you got one? I think the, this is our rotation we're going through right now. I don't know he did the crying one. one. Did the cry no, no, but you, I, asked I gotta, the, you asked the question. You, at, you asked the question, though. Yeah. What about you? What's something we all don't know about you? Wait, didn't internet? you not do one? E? I didn't. I didn't get an answer from you. I got you. You did a, the the crying one, but we, I didn't oh, I was like, I went in enough on that one. I was like, I didn't know I needed mm. an additional one on top of that. <laughs> I I said explicitly, you cannot piggyback on him. Okay, but fair yeah, enough. I, but yeah, okay. Cog had to know. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Something that I do not related to the internet? Is that what you're going for? Or? Something that you do that you don't share with the internet. I don't think what I haven't shared. Because like a lot of your guys' days are documented. Like I know you guys both go to the gym because I see the photos. Um, you yeah. know, like stuff like that. But are there stuff you just don't mm -hmm. post? Because my life is mostly undocumented. People have yeah. no idea who I That's am. That's what I would have. I'm waiting yeah, for Yeah, I was like, I mean, yeah, I was like, yeah, I, was like I, I was like, I sit here and I cover Destiny a lot. I play video games, go to the gym. I used to do like obstacle course racing a lot more. Um, that was fun. We did that for about three or four years where it's like mud runs. Like, uh, 
Oh, well, we had homie on. Like Kit on. Yeah, like, yeah he just got yeah. done doing one of those. We did those for like it's four or five mother. years. Yeah, I was like, I've done five Tough Mudders. Oh. Um, yeah. So I was nice. like, I'm, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's it was like cool. five Tough Mudders. I did, yeah, there was a point where we did like 10 in one year. Uh, they're, they're smaller. Like some are like 5K and it's like really not that big and the obstacles are slammed together. Uh, mm-hmm. I did the Spartan Beast, which is like, it ended up being about 15 miles. Um, that one messed up my IT band on my right leg. But uh, yeah, obstacle races were fun for a little bit. I've probably mentioned off and on that I did I taught kickboxing for like four or five years at a fitness kickboxing studio. Um, I really did enjoy that. Hated the management. And yeah. since I never got into it, it was the owner and stuff like that that I didn't didn't ever really agree with generally. But I really enjoyed the like just the teaching of the class and helping people get better and just watching people progress. Like there were some really cool transformations and stuff that I got to watch, but yeah, the obstacle racing for like, yeah, it was like five tough motors under my belt. It's not, not, I guess stuff that I should not mention. So no doubt, no doubt. Trav, I need to know the answer to your own question. Um, yeah, like I said, it's kind of easy for me to pick one because I don't share anything like with the internet. Like they, I, I, my goal is for lots of people to know my content, but not know me. That's like, mm. my, 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 I think you're intentionally yeah. closed off. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I don't like sharing people. Um, I guess like, I don't know, to piggyback off what E was saying, like I also run, I run like 15 miles a day. Usually I run once in the morning and once at night. It's crazy. Um, cardio i actually yeah i i used to be overweight i think you guys uh, definitely e knows that yeah because he saw me on the fire team chat episode he was like wow you look super different yeah dude, <laughs> I, to, I lost 65 pounds when covid started mm-hmm. um uh i politically involved i i don't sure. i don't believe in sharing that online i really think it it I'm draws sure. lines with people so i just yeah, like to kind of keep that in my pocket but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, i do that um I've mentioned this online a few times, but I GM RPG sessions and I'm, I like writing for like creatively for I'll that sort back. of stuff. So that's mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, there's a, I mean, you can take your pick as a, for pretty much everything I do. I don't document online. Yeah. Like you, I'm, you're very I'm a porn star. Did I mention that? I have a secret porn. Oh star yeah. But that's, that, that's why the sites come up and this is your yeah, little side. Yeah. Up. Yeah. yeah. Chat.69. I think it was called today. I like how they change their name every time. <laughs> every single it's time. Stupid. And so the, the, the funny thing is the goal. I'm like, what is the goal? Because isn't it the you link? You can't to- convert. I told you guys that. I tried to convert just to see what would happen. And they don't have a YouTube account. And you can't go to the site. And it's like, <laughs> what is the goal here? You can't yeah. even do the thing they're asking you. That you're do. asking so, to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. this makes sense. No doubt. No um, doubt. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, there's there's a lot of stuff that I do that I don't share with the internet, but uh, no doubt I'm an open book. People ask me. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see. One the, I was like one yeah. more for time wise because my, yeah, my, my wife's my wife's flight has literally just la- hit the ground. Oh, yeah, like, you gotta get you gotta pick the up last two far times far my wife you from that? about part. 15 minutes and not that bad, but oh, okay. she's on the ground. I gotta like <laughs> book it. So we'll leave it to you for the last one. Last question. Yeah. Yeah. You go. Me. Oh. Um. Well, now I want pics of Cog crying. <laughs> <laughs> now he has Bro, to share it with the internet. I, the my, my cousin, I cried when Optimus Prime died in the theater. Wow. I was destroyed. You really? You'll just dry it. You'll cry at the drop of a fart. I love that. That's, an admirable, bad, that's an admirable uh, quality. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you, like, I, that's one of those things, too, is like, I always wonder if I'm, I'm honestly glad you said that, because I honestly wondered if I was like, you know, I thought like, something was wrong with me. I'll be honest. No, like, me. I'm like, yeah, why are all of my, like, why do I cry yeah, do I so I often, especially in yeah. like, and it's over movies and I'm going, or, yeah. and honestly, that was why we got to the end of end game. It's like, you know, however many movies later over the course of 10 years and you get like characters that you get attached to and you get luck, but it's like well-written stuff and things like that. It's like, sometimes it just like hits and I'm like, can't control it. Here we go. And I'm just gone. I got one for y'all. Maybe. Um, okay. Childhood heroes. Any heroes, fictional, real life, non like any heroes, any inspirations. Oh, yeah. I had a lot, dude. Like both fictional and real life. Like uh, fictional, I was basically raised by like the characters on West Wing and Star Wars. And I mean, like you you name them, dude. Like I, I had so many here. I think all my role models were like on TV because I didn't have a lot in real life when I was growing up. Uh, and then in like the real life role models, 
uh, Socrates, mm. uh, you know, philosophers, people from history, mm. super cool. Um, mm. Who else did I think was like the coolest person ever when I was young? Dude, there's so many examples. I, I had nothing but like external role models. That's Pretty cool. much anyone that ever appeared on WWE was a role model to me back in the day. Or back as it was day. called WCW. WCW, WWF. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Those people, was yeah, dude. Like I, I, yeah, that's like, it's hard to choose just one, uh, mm-hmm. to be honest on that one. But yeah, lots Those of are good choices. Models. Those are good choices. E, your, your heroes. Uh, fictional and now fictional Ch- childhood specifically childhood okay. specifically childhood yeah. he's like Zavala <laughs> what would you do if he said that <laughs> <laughs> no I'm sitting here trying to desk. think like what I I'm trying to think Cog I mean if you know go because I'm honestly no trying person. to think yeah um Ultimate Warrior was my st- he was a big hero for me. I, I just thought he was the most electric thing I've ever seen as a kid. You throw face paint and then a guy running to the ring at this frenetic energy. He was he looked like a comic book character. I've never seen anything like that. And then at the time, again, this is emotional cog, right? I Hulk Hogan was the thing. And he was my little guy that I found and I watched him go from Intercontinental and then it happened. Good guy versus good guy, which was unheard of at that time. Baby Wait, did face- you did you choose a wrestler just b- like because I mentioned it or was that your plan the whole time? No, actually I just mentioned it. I just mentioned really? it. Really? Okay, okay. Yeah. I was gonna I just, say, like if that was your choice, that'd be crazy if just by coincidence <laughs> I brought up yeah. That's, that's yeah it just bro, it, it, I, I was a big fan. And then it was like he it was unheard of. Hulk Hogan never lost at that time. We all know this thing was scripted. But at the time, you tell a kid, that's real. That's real what's going on. So that there and then it's real to me. You threw me, me, damn it. <laughs> um I think Nas as a lyricist. I just respect oh, yeah. his poetry, where he came from. Um Queensbury. Tupac was mine, dude. I listened to Tupac. Well, Tupac's bass. Yeah, Tupac. He's so 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 good. You know what I mean? But yeah, Nas definitely he the way he told stories and painted a picture of the inner city i felt was extremely accurate and stuff that people like me can relate to so that and then um i imagine you so crying many. listening to nas <laughs> I, I never cried listening to nas <laughs> Did you cry no watching happen. wwe yeah. when ultimate warrior won uh wrestlemania 6 yes really he cried oh that's when so he had cool. the two belts oh yeah Bro, I said, oh, when, yeah. when i'm alone by myself in my <laughs> That it will go down. It will go because that's my yeah. moment. That's for me. Yeah, you guys see what the man box and toxic masculinity has done to us. We, I know you have to cry, you have to wait till you're alone. You gotta to feel wait till you're that's, alone to oh, show bro, your emotions. It's so messed up, up, bro. Like, I cried so when when Steve Young in '94 won it because they said he would never win. He's never be as good as Joe Montana. And '94, that was my when they won. They beat the Cowboys and they went and they destroyed the Chargers. Oh my god, I went crazy. But anyway, it's not enough about me. E, you gotta do heroes. You Man, I like I'm sitting here racking my brain. I'm trying to think. Oh, like boy, you gotta have some childhood heroes, uh, E. Yeah, you had Come a million. With all you're, these plain sandwiches and you know what I, you know what I think <laughs> you, know, you know what I think you're doing, E, is you're 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 uh discarding good in this uh, in search of perfect. Just yeah, name one just of them. Name it doesn't one. have to be the best one. Yeah, just what it meant to you. You must have had many. And then I'll give you a, a last uh, alley oop one favorite color. I'm dying to know y'all favorite colors. Oh, uh, really? that I can do in like two seconds. Um, I know mine's. And I, I, I got a reason why I have a favorite. Uh, well, I can oh, tell you my color is hunter green, like specifically like a dark green. Ooh, hunter green? It's hunter like the best be way. It's, uh, you should be an Xbox fan now. What nope, happened? Wrong green. <laughs> no, hunter green is just a dark green. That's the best way because okay. that's why if you look it up, it's like a dark green. It's not like grass green. It's not like money green. It's just dark you green is just box fan you know it's yeah. funny i think of the xbox brand i do not think of green i don't even, i don't even think of colors anymore when it comes to that stuff it's just the yeah. no, no. world's Real worst quick. E, you still got to give a hero and while he's waiting yeah, try i'll give you a color yeah why he, he got uh, i gotta fucking, color. i gotta run too. I, I don't i yeah. honestly don't know if i have a favorite color when i was a kid my dad asked me what my favorite color was and i said green because i want to have money that was my answer <laughs> so there you go like i i i don't know if i actually have an emotional reaction when i see colors but right. uh mine yeah. is technically gray but it's really it's technically gray but it's silver because I feel silver, silver is a better version of gray. And gray fits right in the middle between black and white. I just love gray. Gray's a gray color. Gray. It's my favorite. 
That looks I mean, blue on my monitor, actually. That's this is like, gray and this is gray purple, blue. But I found out when you wear oh. both of them together, they look like yeah, yeah those both look purple. like this is very purple. Oh, that is not yeah, coming through on camera. Yeah, that's weird. Camera. I don't Just, know what it is. Hey, hurry up, say what you gotta say so you can get your wife. Yeah, I know. Uh Man, Green I, was also his hero. E, <laughs> you've got to have a damn hero. You like Mega Man and you like um, what's the other game that you go absolutely crazy for? Chrono Trigger, um, football people. Chrono Trigger, and I mean, I you like on to have heroes, bro. Come on, yeah, cartoons, I mean, something. Yeah, I was like, I mean, cartoons like the what they're remaking actually, the '97 X Men. Okay. Um, because it was I always liked Gambit for some reason. Okay, like that was one. Of, he was always like not like the main guy, kind of off the like, and just like the fun. card throwing. Like his kinetic card throwing always was like it seemed unique because his kinetic power mm -hmm. seemed there. So I'll take I will probably have to revisit this because we'll have to do yeah. this at some point in the future, but I will think on it. But again, for okay, now, we'll please. take like X Men, by the way, a mm -hmm. metaphor for homosexuality. Interestingly enough. I thought it was a metaphor for um like the, the Jewish struggle with Mac uh, Nemo but, and I mean that's you know? part of it, but no, the whole idea of X Men is it's a bunch of people who are are secretly cropping up in society and they have this identity that's different and people fear oh, them. Oh, that's the mutant. Yeah, okay, I got you. Okay. Uh, the, the mutant movement. The but yeah, there's a lot of different stories within it, but broadly speaking. Okay. Yeah. Respect. That All right. Come. Well, you guys know where to find this. I have to run to the airport. We will. If you guys enjoyed this one, let us know in the comments, anywhere you find this thing, uh, hit us up on Twitter. Um, just let us know if you enjoyed this episode. Iron Lord Podcast, Lord Cognito, Ty Guy, Travis, IGN, and myself, Ebontis. You guys know where to find us. Thank you guys. If you enjoy this one, if you have questions for us, maybe we could do a repeat if you guys have questions. Uh, I have a Last Word Podcast email. I will try and put that in the description and mention in the future. So thank you guys. Have an awesome one. We will see you next week. <laughs>